Okay, so what are we gonna do now? The prisoners are coming to get us, right? It's none of your business, so stay out of it. Just lie down and sleep here. Forever. This is totally my business. This is my dream. So, what's the plan? There's only one thing to do. We must defeat that pseudo-warden and stand up for the real warden who fought with us and died honorably. He didn't even stop to think that the warden might actually be alive and is planning to get revenge on us. His undemon-like, undoubting heart is also one of Lord Valvatoris's formidable powers. In any case, whether he's real or fake, he certainly has the support of some hidden force behind him. Indeed. Only the President would be able to grant such a prize as pardons to prisoners of Hades. I concur. Could the power behind him possibly be... Who is it? Tell me! We must plan accordingly. Episode 3! Yeah, that's Fuka for you. She says the word dream about as much as you hear the words darkness and kingdom hearts. <laughs> and that's a lot if you've never played that game. So yeah, looks like we have a new feature in the campaign. I can appoint cabinet members now. Basically, all it really means is... Um, depending on what character you put where, you'll get bonuses in certain stack growths. Um, as Fenric will so helpfully ex explain to us. Um, and the little globe symbol next to those means that those are online positions. What's really cool about this is I can send, if I put a character in that position, they will appear in other people's games. That's really cool. If you ask me, um, and they, I, if someone is nice enough to bribe me um, with an item, for example, I would receive the item that they gave my character. Pretty cool, huh? Um, the other benefit is, depending on what actions you do in other people's senates, you will receive a CP aside from the items, and CP in um, is a new thing where that helps you create uh, custom maps. Oh, look at that, he's got a top hat and a bow tie. That makes me laugh. Um, yeah, CP lets you buy um, certain products that you could use inside the uh, create a level feature. Uh, as far as I'm in the game now, I still haven't really um, used that feature that much because I've just been concentrating on beating the story and uh, grinding my characters and whatnot. But uh, I'll probably look at that a bit more once I've um, once I've gotten a decent amount of grinding under my belt. Um, there's probably trophies associated with this too. They're all the rage these days. Um, Ford Minister and Defense Minister being uploaded. Uh, let's see. Well, that's right. Well, last time I did not really get to finish my review of the healer. So let's... Look at that. The mage just have beards. <laughs> oh, God. This game. So, let's see here. I, I, I didn't get to read the, the, the stats of the healer. And God darn it, I'm not going to leave you guys in the dark. How else will you know, aside from game facts and getting the guide yourself and just getting the shut up all right the healer uh, aptitudes HP 80 SP 120 attack 100 uh, surprisingly decent for a healer uh, for a mage type character what was the witch in comparison 70 <laughs> yeah but that's because most people um, their other weapon forte is bows do the witches even have another forte? No, they don't. They're only staff. So, in the early parts of the game, a bow might be one of your best bets. 
and killing enemies to get mana. So that's why they have a decent attack stat. Uh, defense 100, intelligence 100, resistance 130, uh, hit 110, and speed 80. And remember, like I said, the, um, the, the resistance aptitude is, is, um, the stat is what affects your healing ability. Oh, 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 check this out. So I just placed, uh, evil symbols. Uh, the pyramid one, uh, you know, the characters in there, they get 50% of the mana gained by other characters when they make a kill. And the other one is the heart cannon. And that thing is broken. I, I am not kidding. Put your strongest physical attack characters in that slot. And here's why. I might have mentioned this already, but I, for the people that haven't seen that, this is why it's important. And, you know, at the time, I didn't really understand the usefulness of this. But, say, Valvatoris and Fenric are in the group right now, obviously. Say I put Valvatoris next to a, a Prinny, and I attack the Prinny with three other characters, and Valvator, uh, with, yeah, three other characters, and Valvatoris is just standing next to it. Um, Valvatoris will attack the same enemy for each time someone else in your party attacks the enemy. So, for three executed commands, you will have attack. You will have used six attacks, and the attack gets greater every turn. In addition to, you can do um, combo attacks if other characters are next to you. So for bosses, this is a godsend. You could theoretically get uh, let's see, uh, like 18 attacks by having Valvatoris stand next to a character. Get um, all your nine of your other characters do attacks on one enemy. It would have to be a really tough enemy to be able to take that kind of punishment. And then Valvatoris would attack nine times himself. And then one additional time, uh, the 19th, for his own executed command. Don't tell me that's not insane. And him and Fenric are in the party. So he and Fenric could be on either sides of an enemy, and they each would go for all the other attacks that were committed. It's insane. I can't believe this guy, um, Nipponichi put such a attack, a feature in this game. It, it's, it's almost game breaking when it comes to boss slaying. Almost. I mean, it, it really helps. It, it, it helps a lot. If you play this game, understand what it does and abuse it to the max. You will get a lot more attacks in in a single round um, it, knowing how it works, what I know now, if I were to play this game all over again, I would probably have a, <laughs> a much easier time, let me tell you. Um, so yeah, it's a new chapter, so, and every time we go around, talk to the characters, they have new stuff to say. Um, get the treasure chest, and I'm just, um, equipping Fuka better for the first time since I have full access to my inventory this time. Um, always check the shop to see if you can get your character's better, um, equipment if you have the money. Buying stuff from the shop can increase your customer rank, which lets you buy better stuff from the shop, which is always good. Um, Fuka probably just benefits. Uh, her ability, e ability helps keep her alive, and her aptitudes are, you know, good in the HP and attack and defense category. So focus on armor and, atta and attack attributes. Probably You probably don't need to stick a belt on her. It, it wouldn't hurt, but um, honestly, three pairs of armor would help her survivability immensely. And then, if you just go into the item world for an axe of hers, um, she will clean up. The only downside is axes don't have a lot of great um, area of effect attacks, at least not early on. And I mean, um, as far as I'm right now, she still doesn't have an axe attack that does hits more than one character. She learns um, Fuka moves that do that, but Let's you know that's much this later. Nightmare. Oh look, she said nightmare instead of dream. Good for her. Uh, let's see the healer. All right, those are the base stats uh, and the saint, the best one. Here's what they are: HP aptitude 90, SP 145. Attack 125, still decent for an intelligence character. 
Um, defense 125, intelligence 125, resistance 155. That's the that's your pay dirt. Hit 135 and speed 90. Uh, here I was I, I kind of wanted to make a monster. I knew I wanted to make a wigglone later, and I kind of decided on a slime. Uh, oh, listen to this. Get jiggly with it. Oh my god. Um, I, I, I chose slime because I wanted a good tankish type monster. Um, I usually make good wood golems later, and here I'm just trying to decide what I want to name my slime. And you'll never guess what I end up naming it. Most of my names are references from other games. This is, is a reference to Dragon Quest. So I increase the HP because it's a bit low, and then the defense. If it's going to be a defensive unit, you definitely want good... I mean, its defense is already the highest of all classes, I think. Oh, check this out. Yes, we can. <laughs> All right then, Jell Obama. We're going to be expecting big things from you. Can you believe that? And here's the thing. I don't think that was um, Nipponichi of America that did that joke. I bet the original Japanese did that. Why? Well, to get a little bit personal, I've been to Japan. And I, I taught English there for a year, to be honest. And elementary students who were anywhere from first to sixth grade when they found out I was from America, they would say in English, yes, we can, and ask me if I knew President Obama. <laughs> so if the children know it, are making jokes about Obama, I can guarantee you the people that made this game did as well. There are a shit ton of references in this game to other things. Uh, it, it's really quite funny. Uh, so yeah, I was just saying, um, it's, def it's base defense is already good, so you'd probably want to increase your base HP stat to balance it out because, well, you might have good defense if you don't have the hit points to take it. It's not going to make much of a difference. So it's since this is primarily a defensive unit, um, focus on muscles for HP and armor. No need for movement, no need for SP or stuff like that. Its attacks are a bit weak at first, unfortunately, but you, know, you could uh, fix that by giving it a good weapon. And now we're ready for chapter three, number one, Murder Labyrinth. There they are! Let's kill them and get out of here! I can't believe I can win my freedom just by killing those weak-looking fools! Let's kill those biatches! Kill, kill, and kill! Damn, do you hear how they keep saying kill? It's very Prisoner of Hades-like. That's precisely what they are. If you keep acting like you're in a dream, you're going to get yourself killed. Not that I care. <laughs> I'm putting an end to your depraved and insolent ways. I'll get rid of you and finally clear myself of everything you blamed on me. How can you show your face to us? You fake wannabe warden Axel! <laughs> fake? You idiot! Do you really think there could be two people who look as stunning as I do in the universe? What? You're real? Why are you fighting us? Have you forgotten the days we used to scramble around the battlefield together? We're comrades! Who wants your back? You're not my comrade! You can't just sugarcoat your memories of me like that! Fate has made us enemies. There's only one person I can consider to be my comrade. The son of the president! His name is Sir Death Emizel. <laughs> I'll finish 
you off this time, you impudent pretty instructor! What's everyone's problem? Why do you all look so damn disappointed? Hmm. I guess I didn't hide it well enough. Then I apologize, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I guess I was expecting a crazier twist. Uh, your apologies are pissing me off even more! Anyway, you two are surely exceeding your authoritative powers by promising to give these prisoners pardons. I find it very hard to believe that failures like you were entrusted with such power by the Corruptiment. What do you say about that? Huh? Well? Failures? That's not how they acted in front of us! But... They don't look like they can actually grant us pardons! Did they... <laughs> lie to us? No, no way! You will be granted pardons! It's an official promise by Sir Amizel, the President's son! Don't listen to them! Hey, Warden! Are you sure we should really promise them that without my pop's consent? Everything will work out fine, as long as we defeat those fools. I'm sure your father will approve the pardons to reward them for stopping the anarchists. Your rep will be restored, and you'll probably even get a promotion. Yeah, you're right! Okay, let's do it! As our president's only son, I promise that you will be pardoned! Now go put down those anarchists! I guess that wasn't enough to dissuade them. Those two seem rather determined to do this. <laughs> she won't be able to open that smart-ass mouth of yours for much longer. Although their powers are restricted here, these prisoners are the most brutal criminals in the netherworld! You guys are history! Fighting against a former comrade. What irony! However, you leave me no choice. I will simply have to give you a sound and decisive beating! That didn't take much persuading. Besides, you were the only one who was rambling about being comrades and whatnot. And thus, Hades' most epic battle was underway. This battle developed into a significant event that eventually altered the very future and destiny of the Netherworld. <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't noticed, promises are kind of a big deal with Alvatores and the game itself. Alright, let's see what we got here. Uh, experience plus 50%, but that's only if the enemies come all the way to me on the blue. Have we fought Mothman yet? I can't recall. These guys are annoying to fight because of their speed. Close it, clo um, close, uh, point blank melee attacks are really hard to get on these guys because 50% is your maximum chance of hitting them. So annoying. And they have really good speed, so sometimes if you attack from afar, if your hit stat isn't good enough, um, it still might be less than 50%, which is quite common. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take advantage of the attack plus 50 and uh, snipe these characters with magic. And then uh, steadily make wait, uh, make my way forward with the melee characters. Not attacking the moss. What are the moss weak to? Wind? Yeah. Fortunately, not strong enough to take them out in one hit. Really annoying. Look how little that is left. So, I think while it is resistant to ice with that little HP left, it's gone. Even with a Nick. If you haven't noticed, Nick decreases the amount of damage you deal, criticals increase it. Alright. Uh. New. Uh. Generic class unit of the Let's Play Day. So, uh. We're gonna go over the Orc. As you can see right there. Alright. Uh, description. Orcs are rank-and-file melee characters. They're a bit like warriors with a touch of flavor added. Though this monster group is good at inflicting forget, you should focus more on their direct damage to provide long-term viability. 
forget, if you're curious, is a status ailment where you can't use special skills. Uh, there are some good class skills to be had. Flying V-Strike and Petite Orc Juggler provide cheap single-target damage. Gaia Crush is great for clusters of enemies. Rush to the fifth tier of the class if you can. Dark Mastery is a great ability. Having more aptitude is always a good thing, and you will use a monster weapon regardless if, of your Here ability choices. Um, so yeah. How to unlock? You win the battle after killing a sludge. I've looked up because usually you get after killing an orc. And that attack is so goofy. Alright, uh, magic change type is a sword. Fire resistance, 25%. Wind resistance, 0. Ice resistance, negative 50. Uh, skills. Uh, Braveheart. It actually learns Braveheart, believe it or not. Um, that's the skill that increases your attack, and for some characters, that can in that can make you just that much more powerful. Stack brave hearts, and you'd be uh, amazed at the damage you can do. Really helpful for killing certain boss characters. It wasn't the old game. All right. Uh, for special skills, we have Mistake Eraser. I, if we saw that already, that's the one where they kind of jump on their club and they fire off like a rocket. That's been like the past two games. Uh, Orc Hero Gas. <laughs> yeah. Petite Orc Juggler. And Gaia Crush. It's, um, magic change abilities are Flying B Strike, which actually in the older games used to be a normal skill it could use. And Orc 100 Slash. Anything with a number like 100 in it, I'm curious to see. Boom! You notice they're both axe users, so they both did defense down when they attacked. Very nice. Alright. Class Evilities. Mass Psyche. Uh, increases stats by 20% for every other orc that's deployed. Unless you plan on making a massive amount of an orc army, uh, this ability is pretty much useless. It's only really useful for the <laughs> for the enemies themselves because look there's three orcs on the map so each one of them has their stats increased by 40 percent good for them i mean i've never made an orc myself in all the other games i've played two and three and i have not made one so far and i don't see myself making an orc outside of just getting all the classes so this and so making more than one is like even less likely so that's almost useless. Uh, next ability, Amnesic Blast. 50% chance to add Forget to normal attacks. This can be very useful if you're attacking boss characters. Because if boss characters usually rely on their special skills to do high damage, and if their um, special skills attack multiple enemies and they can't do that, um, suddenly they become a lot less threatening. So consider that, to be honest. Although, there are other um, character classes in the game that can cause Forget as well, so unless you have an orc already and you're using it, uh, don't make one just for the sake of that ability. Patience. Increases normal attack by 50% when the character is under 25% health. Um, this could be useful if you equip a... there's a weapon called a weight. Um, it will reduce your HP to 25% automatically. Um, this is... It's primarily used to increase a, a, a certain other stat at the cost of your HP, but primarily, um, Disguise Veterans just use it for characters that have low HP-based abilities and getting it there automatically at the start of a fight. So for an Orc, if you equip a, a, a weight, and then unequip it, you will have 25% health, and you could take advantage of this e ability if you wanted to. And increasing your... But remember, it's only normal attack damage, so this will probably only be the most useful in team attack combos. You could not use... This um, skill will not benefit any of your e abilities. I mean, sorry, any of your specials. And if you have that low health, and you have to get up close and personal for all your attacks, you might want to reconsider that, you know? And finally, Dark Mastery, which the guide recommended. Increase, increases aptitude by 20% when a monster weapon is equipped. 
and you would only ever use your monster weapons. So yeah, remember, increasing your uh, aptitude increases the, the stats you get from all of your equipment, and it then increases your base stats. So that is actually really useful, and the only reason you want to run if, um, to raise an orc if you weren't considering using it already is if you had another monster that you like to pass this ability on to them. So, like I said, I'm a huge, um, I'm a huge supporter of wood golems. I would raise an orc to give a wood golem that ability because his aptitudes and certain stats are already really high and a 20% increase would make you just that much stronger. Remember, monsters can equip three abilities as opposed to two like human characters. Another one of the many benefits Nipponichi added to monsters in this game over the over the sky of three and two. They're coming into their own, man, I'm telling you. Alright, so class progression. We have Petite Orc, Orc Captain, Mas uh, Head Orc, Orc Master, Orc King, and Shadow Orc. Um, base aptitude, HP 100, SP 110, attack 120, defense 110, intelligence 70, resistance 70, hit 90, and speed 100. This is not a defensive unit, it's pretty much all physical attacks. Um, Shadow Orc, the final one, here's how good your uh, aptitudes can be, you got 125 for HP, SP is 135, attack is 145, defense 135, intelligence 80, resistance 80, hit 100, and speed 125. So, um, with the 20% aptitude bonus, their attack, ap attack aptitude 145 would actually be, uh, let's see, 14.5 times 2 is... 29, so it would actually be 174 for attack. They all go up by tw uh, 20%, but that's what your attack aptitude would be. That's so it's one of those units where you have to uh, you have to wait a long time for the full potential to be realized. Um, but their base ability would still be useless if you don't have more than one of them. And that is the primary reason I don't recommend using Orc during your primary leveling up of the game. Um, oh look, it seems I, I missed the thief in the corner, so now I have to move all my characters over there quite slowly to get it. Um, wait to level up an Orc until the post-game where you could level up enemies in the blink of an eye with magic change and certain level up maps. Afterwards, teach them their abilities, and then pass the abilities on to more useful characters you plan on using with better innate abilities and aptitudes. Um, because that is a very handy one. But yeah, all in all, I've never used an orc. Still don't plan to. This game did not change that. I will level up one up eventually, and I might take benefit of that aptitude. I mean, of that aptitude ability. It really depends what some of the other possible abilities are that I could teach some of my other monsters. Because I'm using uh, currently, I'm using more than just one monster. You could um, there are uh, quite a few useful ones as opposed to before. Um, uh, and and please remember, like I said, experiment. I don't recommend an orc, but if you want to use one, if if it just <laughs> if. If you just, if it just screams orc, or you were born in the year of the pig of the zodiac, don't let me stop you. There are, there's no wrong way to play this game. So just have fun, okay guys? And that's the end of this, I'll see you in the next Let's Play. Oh crap, they beat up all the prisoners! Well, young master sir, I'm gonna go prepare for the next battle now. See ya! Hey! Warden Axel! Rasko? You're free to use whatever tactics you so please, as long as you always keep your promise. If the prisoners are able to successfully defeat us, you better keep your promise and grant them pardons. You got that? What the hell are you talking about? 
Why do you care about a promise that can only be kept if you die? Are you okay? That's my lord's strength and weakness. You have no right to judge him. You got that, Rascal? Keep that promise you made. You will learn the true weight of a promise through severe pain. Severe pain? What are you gonna do to me? I will do nothing. However, you will feel it in your heart. Oh, what the hell do you mean by that? You're like, totally whack. Hey, why are you so obsessed with keeping promises? Did something happen in your past or something? Intruding on someone's personal issues? As expected of a human, after all, you are creatures of egotism. Oh, come on. I'm just curious. Mind your own business. Ugh, what's your problem? Let's go. Our priority now is to restore order to this place. That is my duty as a Prinny instructor. Uh, no, I believe that is beyond your scope of responsibilities as a Prinny instructor. But... I approve of this plan, since it would bring positive results. All is for my lord. Phew! I've almost reached the target amount. This is all for the Lady Archangel who supports me, even if it is against the will of Celestia. And to stop him.